Jaden had undergone two penis enlargements, followed by one reduction. The operations had been undertaken by two robo-docs who had turned up at his pod, complete with tools, anaesthetics, dressings, and super silicon. Of course, he had wanted to be as impressive as everybody else on the Skippy Sex sites, but recent research and, indeed, personal experience had shown that having too much length and girth interfered with the daily fitness requirements. He enjoyed his bouts of Skippy Sex. Technically, they were masturbation sessions with a video link to a distant partner, usually at least partially unclothed, in order to show off their robo-sculpted bikini bodies, as well as their de rigueur, pendulous breasts and lightened hair. His favourites amongst these available women might also sport a feminine tattoo, a butterfly on the left shoulder, a mermaid or two on the inner thigh. So long as you sat perfectly still, the laser from the home screen could execute most designs perfectly. Sometimes Jaden wondered what it would be like to actually couple with a willing partner in the flesh. The government's anti-contact legislation 12 years ago had forbidden physical intimacy at all levels of society. Even mothers and babies didn't snuggle together anymore. It was healthier for the child to be monitored and raised by artificially intelligent and clearly superior nurses and teachers. Jaden's memories of attending school and shaking hands with, bumping into or hanging around with so-called friends were a bit hazy these days, like it was another life now gone. The films he watched while he trained on his fit monitor still showed people in close proximity but were composed of manipulated images. Sports events were one-on-one affair, one -on -one affairs, tennis matches mostly. Team sports had died with the advent of the no-touching rules. You wanted to stay alive and avoid ill health, didn't you? It was bad enough having to carry around your own bacteria without being effect infected by somebody else's. He was wearing comfortable, loose sports clothing. The pod's heating was set at its regular level and he could have trained without any clothes had he wished, but wearing the right gear kept him in the zone. He set the treadmill to time him on his regular morning 5k run. A noise outside distracted him. It was almost certainly the delivery drone pushing into his pod airlock with a fresh batch of supplies. But it put him off his stride, and now, even if he pounded against the plastic pads, he was never going to achieve a new personal best. Never mind. Just focus on the screen projection of passing conifer trees and let the tempo of his chosen music keep him on track. Abruptly, everything faded, ceased. He gripped the sidebars to stop himself falling over from residual momentum. It was dark in the pod, uncomfortably so. An emergency red light flashed on and an automated voice advised him to exit the property immediately. Follow protocol, it shrieked, to the arriving bat backbeat of a two-note alarm. The system must be battery-operated or some such retro shit, he decided. He crossed to his door and tried the internal manual lever. It was stiff from disuse, or he was out of the habit, but it opened on the fourth wrench. He was alone in the corridor. The logo of a green walking figure alerted him to the location of the exit. He headed that way. He had been so long cooped up indoors that he hadn't remembered that he lived on the third floor. Common sense told him to head down. Even so, he found the descent more challenging than he'd anticipated and almost lost his footing on three occasions. His flat-level workouts hadn't prepared him for this eventuality. A push on the door and he was outside in an uncomfortably agoraphobia-inducing space. The floor was grey, hard, dirty, but clearly not natural. His googly lenses were having trouble adjusting to the changed light. And there were other people around too, which simply added to Jaden's confusion. 
The men looked mostly similar to his own stored image, toned, muscled, wearing a singlet, sneakers and shorts. The women uniformly sported dyed blonde hair, their micro waists and stick-like sculpted legs doing their best to keep their top-heavy bodies upright. A few were attempting to cover their bikinis with shreds of fabric to preserve a modesty important in the personal world that was largely absent in the virtual. Jaden blinked three times, hoping his lenses would reset. To his left, he spied some large metal objects, their paint flaking. Although there were nothing like the visuals on the latest games, he realised these must be vehicles, which meant he was standing in that most retro of locations, a car park. Before he could ponder further, the silent spell was broken by a man over to his right. Shit, is that actual sunshine up there? It's going to give me cancer or ruin my tan. A woman to Jaden's immediate left with a towel wrapped around her shoulders responded, Hey guys, we're out in the open air. It'll be toxic. I don't think I can breathe. As if to confirm her fears, she began coughing. Jaden was worried that he might have to support her in some way, which would breach the anti-touching laws. A fit racked her body, revealing a butterfly tattoo on her shoulder. Jaden recognised her as an ex-skippy sex partner. In real life, her complexion was patchy and her super-enhanced breasts looked likely to overbalance her at any moment. The tension was broken by a repeated robotic announcement. All clear, return to dwellings immediately. At first, there was a rush and an almost collision. Then everybody remembered the legislation and allowed large gaps to form in the still hurrying queue. After you, neighbour, Jaden said to the coughing woman. Why, thank you, J24XB. The tightened skin of her fingers reached towards him until she thought better of it. Skip with me later, boy, she added, heading breathlessly for the first floor. Thank you.